Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, an Apple Certified Trainer. Today we'll be taking an in-depth look at just one of the plugins in the CoreMelt Luminous package. Camera Defocus Z Mask lets you create the tilt shift or fake miniature effect where a real world shot looks like a tiny model. It's a popular effect and a lot easier to produce than people realise. I've seen some movies which used a Photoshop action run over an image sequence, but it's a lot easier to stay in Final Cut Pro and just apply a filter. The trickiest part of getting tilt shift right is picking the footage. You have to pick a shot that looks like it could be a model, or the effect won't be believable. Shots taken from a distance looking down are probably the easiest to pull off, as that's the way we normally see a model. Tiny cars or people in shot can help sell the illusion as can footage of things which are frequently modelled, such as trains or perhaps buildings. Another tricky part is getting the mask right. The mask defines which parts of the image are defocused and how much. Even slight misplacement here can cause problems. While you can make a simple mask within the effect in Final Cut, the mask you probably want is reflected and is much easier to create with Photoshop. Photoshop is also a good place to explore a similar effect used on still images, so let's take a quick look at how this works. First, we take an image with a fairly wide depth of field. Most of the image is in focus. We want to narrow the depth of field so most of it is out of focus. To do this, we'll convert the image to a smart object by right-clicking on the background layer and choosing Convert to Smart Object. Now we'll apply a simple Gaussian blur so that everything is out of focus. Because we've used a smart object, we can recover the focus we want fairly easily, leaving the blurry areas much blurrier than before. We need to look for the smart filter's mask and apply a black-white gradient to it. I'll use the gradient tool with its third colour preset, that is, not the first one, which is foreground to background, and the fourth gradient type, reflected. So not your straight uh, linear gradient, not a radial or angle, it's the reflected gradient. Now I've selected the Smart Filters mask, and I'm going to click and drag from the middle of the image up one side of the focus I want, and you'll see the focus spreads from both sides. The reflected gradient is useful to get a narrow area of focus in the middle. This is why we've used a reflected gradient, so that the blur effect goes in and out on both sides of where we've dragged. Now we'll have a look at the channels panel, and this will explain how the mask works. Where it's black, no filter is applied, so there's no blur. Where there's white, the filter is applied, and it's blurred. And between the two is a partial blur. So how does this apply in Final Cut Pro? Well, the camera defocus Z mask filter needs a mask to define which areas should be defocused. So you'll probably have to create a black and white image in Photoshop for this to work right. So I'm going to make a 1080p 1920 by 1080 image, and I'm going to put a gradient something like this. Now you'll probably want a few different masks, so we're going to save them with our footage, so probably in Capture Scratch. This way they'll be easily archived. Now that I've saved one of my masks, I'm going to do a slight variation of that mask, and maybe a couple more. You want to save all of these in the same place. Now, to find all these masks, just command click in the Photoshop title bar. It will take you in the finder to where these masks are, and I'm just going to drag them all into my project. Now that the footage is in a sequence, I'm going to add my effect and load it into the viewer so I can see just what I'm doing. I'm going to set the type from gradient to mask layer so I can get that reflected gradient in there. I'm going to drag my mask from the browser straight into that mask layer image well. Now the default settings are pretty good, but I'm going to tweak the settings here to get a bit closer to the tilt shift look. Um, the things you're looking for after getting the mask right are to look at blur minimum should be at zero. Blur maximum should be about 10 to 15. Make sure the number of passes is pretty high. I'll leave that at 8. And up the smoothing a bit. 
what you want to do is emphasize the number of passes over blur max so you get a better result. The peaks and the threshold settings are going to depend a lot on the image and depend on how much of a toy look you want. These can emphasize the highlights more or less. So once you've got it right, press render and take a coffee break. Uh, my Mac Pro here wants a few minutes with this 1080p footage to do just 10 seconds of tilt shift level defocus. There's quite a lot going on and it can be quite slow to render, but the results are really good. Now, if it's not quite right, tweak the mask or the settings and just give it another go. We'd love to see what you've done, so please post in the Creative Cow Core Melt plugins forum with any samples. There is a free trial available of Cormelt Luminous and the whole Cormelt Complete V2 package available from Cormelt.com. And you'll also find tutorials there which show many more of the filters and transitions in action. Thanks for listening and see you on the forums.